This all literally just happened within the past hour. I got out of work at 6.30 p.m. and went to McDonald's to get an iced coffee. I pull up to the drive-thru and there's a red truck in front of me with a cap on the bed. It's super wide so I can't see their mirrors and thus can't get a glimpse of who is inside. I'm minding my own business, listening to Unsolved Mysteries on YouTube, when I see that the red truck has pulled up to the second pickup window. You know, there's a window where you pay, and then two separate windows where you pick up your food. I didn't think anything of it, and just assumed they had a big order, and the McDonald's employee asked him to pull up so I could get my iced coffee. I look up see the truck's reverse lights come on. Okay, they must have pulled up a little too far and are backing up a little, no big deal. But they keep backing up without signaling to me at all that they are backing up. I slowly back up too. Luckily, no one is behind me. They keep backing up and backing up until they are finally parked at the first pickup window now. The McDonald's employee looks out the window at me, shrugs, and gives me a look like, I don't know why they did that. A few minutes goes by. At this point, I'm just thinking about how strange and not part of common etiquette it was to back up without signaling to anyone you need to do so. They could have easily hit me had I not been looking straight ahead, curious as to what they were doing. Now five minutes, at least, goes by. No one is being given any food. I just want my iced coffee, so I'm kind of annoyed that they backed up, thinking maybe they were told to go to the second window, since I only needed the coffee. But they suddenly feel like refusing to do so would get McDonald's to get them their food faster, and thus, they backed up to the first pickup window? I don't know. Anyways, I continue to sit there and wait for my drink when I see the passenger door to the truck open. Out comes an older man, like 65 to 70 years old. He was wearing light khaki colored overalls and a dirty white t-shirt. He starts walking slowly over to my car and I'm thinking, Maybe he's going to apologize to me for not signaling that they were going to back up. He gets to my passenger door window, turns so he is facing the window head on, and just stares at me. I'm waiting for him to signal to put my window down, thinking he had something to say. But he doesn't do anything. He just stands there and stares. He starts to lift his hand towards the door handle and I quickly lock the door. He scowls and walks back to the truck and gets back in the passenger side. They immediately drive away the second he closes his door. They didn't get any food. They didn't get anything. They just left. I pull up to the drive-thru to finally get my iced coffee. It's been well over 10 minutes at this point and I head home. At this point, I have more questions than answers. Why did they back up without signaling? Why did they back up at all? Why did he get out of his truck? Why was he about to open my door? Why didn't he say anything? Why didn't they get any food or drinks? It might not be the creepiest thing to happen on this sub, but this whole ordeal made me so anxious that I was actually shaking the whole ride home, and I am not the best at confrontation, clearly. I just wish I had some insight or understanding to exactly what happened here. I'm sure many of you have been to a newly remodeled McDonald's, possibly one with a McCafe. But have you ever looked up why they started remodeling the restaurants in the first place? The first McCafe in the States popped up in Chicago back in May 2001. 
that was just the beginning. Now, over the last five years, McDonald's has taken to remodeling every single restaurant in America. Most of you might even be asking yourself how long it's been since you last stepped foot in an old McDonald's. Ask anyone who's done some market research, and you'll hear something strange. McDonald's loses money on the process. It's a fact. The new furniture isn't pulling new customers, and the McCafes can't sell coffee that cheap and turn a profit. Look at Starbucks prices, and you'll see what I mean. Stakeholders say they want a more adult vibe to the restaurant. A classier look for a classier America. Wrong answer. Google it right now. What's McDonald's target age group? It's children and teens. It always has been. So then why did they start all these remodels? Why would one of the largest corporations in America spend over one billion on a terrible marketing strategy? That's where things get interesting. Let's start with the play places. If you can remember, almost no two play places at McDonald's were identical. Some of them were really fun. I know I had a few favorites. Well, some of them were also really dangerous. The first gem I could find was a carousel play place in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, back in the 1980s that got shut down mere months after opening. Little information was given about why they closed. The lot has been vacant ever since. If you find the right connections in Lancaster, though, you just might be able to read an article that didn't make it into print. Children would play on the merry-go-round in ways they weren't supposed to, you see. They're kids, so of course they would. Well, one day a few kids managed to crawl underneath the thing, but then they never made it back out. The whole incident was so heavily guarded by McDonald's PR, you'd be troubled to find a single person that was even there that whole afternoon. The only witness anyone could find had this to say. When they went under, a few parents started calling for help. Then something happened to the lights. The carousel kept getting brighter and the music was deafening. I ran out of the building when the machine started to smoke, but I looked back through the window to see if the kids were alright, and the employees were just standing there behind the registers. They looked like they were still waiting for customers. Weirder and weirder stories pick up from there through the years. Reports of children sinking into ball pits that should only be a foot deep. Mothers searching play tubes for their kids only to find a lonely pair of shoes. But the play places held a mere fraction of these incidents. Back in 1996 in Knoxville, Tennessee, there was a businessman of his 40s who went into a McDonald's restroom and remained there for seven hours. Patrons noted that he refused to leave the furthest back stall. The police were finally called and they managed to break down the door. He was restrained by paramedics as he wouldn't willingly leave the restroom. As they pulled him out of the stall, he began screaming, Bloody murder! Take me back! I want to go back! But the moment he exited the restaurant, he passed out. He had no memory of ever going to a McDonald's the day of the incident. The restaurant was shut down before anyone could inspect the stall he had shut himself in. However, anyone who used the bathroom that day mentioned hearing several voices whispering things like, It wasn't him. We have to go back. Saw you smile. Then there was a fry cook somewhere in Vermont back in 99 who walked into the middle of the restaurant and dumped scalding oil on himself without flinching or saying a word. Several of the customers started to laugh and roll around in the burning oil alongside him and were all rushed to hospital. Only one survived, but refused to make a statement. Not that she easily could. Her throat melted all the way through and had to be completely restructured. The manager claimed he didn't remember ever hiring the fry cook and that he wasn't in any official paperwork. His name tag didn't even have a name, just hashtag, 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 hashtag written on it. Once again, the McDonald's was closed without a trace. Most of the stories sounded like urban legends to me, but it never failed. Wherever I found a story, the McDonald's had been shut down in its wake. Near the late 2000s, the number of cover-ups had become so frequent that McDonald's decided to shut all of them down and rebuild. Every. Single. One. But of course, they missed a few. I needed to see one for myself. I remember going into the old McDonald's as a kid, but that was before the frequency of the incidents. That was when it was still safe. There was a small town on the way to my parents' house just off the highway. Araska was its name. Maybe a hundred residents? 
completely untouched by the outside world, practically forgotten. It was pointless to stop there for any normal reason because there wasn't a gas station or rest stop, not even a sign to let you know you were close. Let's just say I had to sneak my way around some very old building permits to discover that they had one of the few McDonald's, aside from some treasured landmarks, that has yet to go through a remodel since the 1970s. How lucky is that? I was surprised that they even had a fast food place, yet they didn't have a market or post office. I planned a trip to my parents' place for the weekend, with a stop at Araska on the way. It was already dark out, since it was the dead of winter, and I didn't get off work till five. I was cold and grumpy about driving at night, but mostly determined. The turnoff from the highway was just a dirt road, with no landmarks or anything. As I pulled into town, none of the houses had lights on. Most of the street lights were out as well, as though nobody had remembered to change the bulbs in years. This place really was untouched. I'd be surprised if most of the residents hadn't moved out or simply died off. It definitely had the makings of a ghost town anyway. I was about to lose hope when I finally saw it. The nauseous yellow light of those golden arches illuminating a vacant parking lot in the distance. It buzzed and flickered like a fly zapper running out of batteries. The sign below said, Eat New Eggs McUffin. We like to saw you smile which I assumed was just a lazy teen's handiwork. I pulled into the lot and carelessly parked my car in the center. There was nobody else there anyway. When I stepped out of my car, I felt a squish under my foot. There was a burger covered in mold with a rancid liquid oozing out. The smell was absolutely vomit-worthy. I jumped out to scrape the contents of the burger from my shoe when I noticed the whole parking lot was covered in trash. There were half-eaten boxes of fries and sun-baked children's toys spilling out of old greased-up McDonald's bags. Everything was mixed in with the dirt and snow like it had been here for months, possibly years. I hurried across the lot to avoid retching all over the asphalt. As I approached the door, I noticed the windows were caked in dust. Somebody had taped a piece of paper to the door with the word closed scribbled across it in red marker. Yet the sign hung from the inside, clearly said open. Cautiously, I approached the door and pushed. An artificial bell hummed, an old McDonald's tune that fizzled out on the last few notes as the door creaked open. I looked around the fluorescent lit room and saw it was void of life. There was nobody sitting at any of the tables and nobody attending the registers. Somebody had left a tray on one of the tables in the back but there was no other sign someone had been there. The inside was at least a little cleaner. The toys on display by the counter were of characters I'd never heard of, likely from before my time. The whole place was covered in faded coats of yellow and red paint, and all the tables had that classic McDonald's wood finish. The wood looked completely rotten, but slathered in coats of polish as a sad attempt to keep it looking new. All of it had a sort of green hue, which I attributed to the old lights. The most noticeable element, though, was a terrible burning plastic smell that stung my nose. I went up to the register. I felt like I shouldn't order anything, but I was hoping maybe I could ask someone a few questions. I waited for a good 15 minutes in silence. I shouted hello with only a muted echo for a response. I had been to a few McDonald's with bad service in the past, but this was insane. With how dirty the whole place was, I should have expected as much. Just as I was about to turn around and give up, the cash register popped open. It was practically begging me to take a tip for myself. Besides, didn't I deserve a slight reward for wasting my time here? I casually walked over to it and saw at least a dozen twenties stacked high. Looking around to make sure nobody was watching, I reached in to take a few bills when the thing suddenly snapped closed right on my fingers. The metal dug deep into my flesh, leaving a dark trail of blood down the side of the counter. I yelped in pain. Behind the counter, at the other end of the grill, was a first aid kit hanging on the wall. The lights were burned out in the kitchen area, but I needed a bandage pronto. I hopped over the table and made my way to the back. The burning smell was getting stronger as I walked. 
I noticed the grill was covered in a thick layer of grease, completely unsuitable for cooking. I passed by the frying station and the oil was filled at the top with maggots. I quickened my walk to the first aid, hoping to get patched up and out of there as soon as possible. I was starting to realize that this restaurant definitely wasn't open for business anymore, and I probably shouldn't have entered it in the first place. I opened up the first aid kit and had to swallow some vomit. A cloud of mold burst out from it in every direction, followed by the same bubbling black ooze that was on the burger outside. I started coughing and waving my hands in the air to clear the mold dust floating around. The same bell I heard playing that McDonald's tune started up again as I steadied myself. I assumed it was broken like the rest of this dump. I looked back toward the counter and noticed everything seemed farther away. I must have been disoriented from losing blood and that awful smell. I looked down at my hand to see how bad the wound was and my eyes widened. There was no wound on my hand at all. I rushed back toward the counter in panic when something under the stove caught my foot and I fell. In the darkness, my eyes started to adjust and I saw the outline of a body. Somebody was under there. Maybe they were unconscious and needed help. I yanked at the person's arm and a half-decayed body slid out across the floor. They were wearing a McDonald's employee shirt with a name tag that read hashtag, 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 hashtag. Their mouth was contorted into a sickening grin, but their eyes were screaming. I tried to shout, but no sound came out, like when trying to wake up from a nightmare. As I scrambled to get back up on the counter, the lights had started to dim, and the McDonald's tune was getting louder, the notes fizzling and distorting as they played. Once I had gotten my grip above the counter, I froze. Since entering, I never looked at the side of the restaurant opposite the counter. There was a play place. The glass separating the main restaurant from the play area had hundreds of bloody handprints smearing down toward the floor. The tube slide was caved in with chunks of red liquid spurting out from the tiny hole left at the bottom. There was a row of nooses tied to the monkey bars in the corner, with employees wearing the same hashtag, 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 hashtag name tags hanging from them. The tables around the perimeter had skeletons with rotting food left on trays, some of the food hanging from the skull's mouths. I looked on in horror, too shocked to move. While the rest of the restaurant went dark, a bulb in the center of the play place continued to glow like a carnival spotlight. Below it was a massive ball pit, barely able to contain all its colored plastic balls. It was smoking under the blaring white light, making that awful burning plastic smell. The balls began to rattle and fall off the edge when something inside started shuffling around. I wanted to run so badly, but my body refused. Then suddenly, the music went dead and the movement stopped. A yellow glove slowly crept upward from the pit below, writhing its fingers as it went. A connected red and white sleeve came after it, slowly alternating colors as they appeared from underneath. The arm continued to reach toward the sky, growing more and more, while its joints popped and cracked like breaking branches. By the end, that arm had to be at least six feet long. It finally reached for the lit bulb on the ceiling with its gangly gloved fingers and began to twist it loose. I broke into a sprint, jumping over the counter and toppling chairs as I went. That last light went out just as I got to the exit. I bashed through the door, breaking the glass in the process. As I rolled into the parking lot, I heard a distant scream, and then something whispered right next to my ear in dead silence. It had the same tinny distortion as the McDonald's tune. Come back. I want to see you smile. I haven't told anyone about what happened there that night. There was an article online saying Araska burned to the ground a few days later. I don't know if it was a cover-up or something else, but I'm never going back to find out. I didn't share this because I want you to get involved, by the way. I shared it to warn you what happens when you do.
You can go to a new McDonald's, keep getting your Big Macs, get your McCafe coffee, that's fine. They did something to the remodels to make them safe, at least for now. But don't ever go into an old McDonald's, not even the drive through I've got to stop typing now and get some pain meds. My jaw hurts and the hand I snapped in that register has been getting itchy. I remember working the night shift the other night at a local McDonald's. I had to fill in for my friend Kiera, who called in sick. This night was probably one of the most terrifying nights I have ever worked. It was dead around 11 p.m. as I was asked about a manager to sweep the floors until a customer came in. One customer came in and he looked a bit rough. Bald, long rusty beard, glasses, sandals, and just clothes that had stains on them. I go over to the register and say, Hello, can I get you anything? He said, Yes, can I have a large coffee please? I take his order and give him his coffee and tell him, Have a wonderful night sir, and he smiles. I go to sweep the floor again as I see this man sitting a bit close to where I would be sweeping, which is usually under the tables and just around the floor. When I reached his table, he says, You're very beautiful. I smile and say, Thank you very much. He says, Can I give you a ride home when you get off of work? I say, No thank you, I have a ride home. He became the opposite of the nice man that I took the order from, to just pure rude. He tells me, What's your schedule? I said, I'm not allowed to give that information out, sorry. He takes his coffee and goes back outside. The next night after that, Kiera and I work together and with my other guy friend, Jack. I told Kiera about the guy from the night before and she just gave me a weird facial expression. Jack comes over to me and says, Monica, is everything okay? I tell him about the guy from the night before and he gave me the look of terror and what he said to me ran chills down my spine. Jack said, that man called the restaurant earlier and asked about you. My blood ran cold as I saw the man walk back into the restaurant. Kiera's face went pale and Jack's jaw was dropped. My stomach turned to knots as I say, Hello, can I get you anything tonight? He says, No, but can I take you home? Jack steps out and says, No, she ain't going anywhere with you. Get out of here before I call the cops. The manager got pissed off at Jack for leaving his position at the drive through window while Kiera was frying burgers. Jack agreed to switch positions with me until the morning crew came in. The manager then asked me to take the trash outside. I nervously said, Okay. Jack on the other hand was pissed that the manager asked me to do it. Jack was nice enough to take it for me. I stayed by inside and Jack comes in and pulls me to the janitor's closet and says, that guy was waiting for you in his truck with five other big guys in there. I felt sick to my stomach when he said that. Jack informs the manager, and the manager, like the freaking a-hole that she was, says, he's not going to hurt anyone, he's harmless, get back to work. The next morning, me and Jack work together, and my other co-worker Taylor, informs me that the man has came back and told her my schedule and he will wait for me to come back in today. I got sick of it till I saw him come in. Jack being the good friend that he was 
told him to get the fuck out of the restaurant and to never come back again, or else he would call the cops. Jack lost his job because of this, but to me, he was just looking out for me. I fucking cried when Jack lost his job, cause I know Kiera and I would be working alone without anyone else there to protect us. But I never saw the man again after that. I quit my job at McDonald's, and so did Kiera. Me, Jack, and Kiera now live in the same apartment building and work at a grocery store. I don't know what could have happened to me if I took out the trash that night, and not Jack. I'm just happy I never get to see that creep again. <laughs>